Thomas C. Watkins opened a hardware store in Hamilton on James Street North in 1847. A few years later, Watkins closed the retail store and opened a wholesale warehouse where the Woolworth store would later stand on King Street East. This became a successful dry goods business and they needed to expand. The Wright House, designed by the Hamilton architectural firm of William Stewart and Company, was built between the years of 1890 to 1893. At the time of its opening, the Wright House was considered to be among the finest and most expensive stores in the city, carrying a large selection of dry goods, carpets, household furnishings, undergarments, and fancy goods. They also manufactured dresses, shirts, and hats. The store's retail space occupied four floors, while the fifth and sixth floors housed offices and a receiving room. In 1910, an addition of a seventh floor and basement were added. The store was the first in Hamilton to install private telephone exchange connections with all departments, the first department store to accept gradual payment or credit for furniture, and the first to establish and guarantee good satisfaction or your money refunded. They were also pioneers in the implementation of a delivery system and in the use of multi-page advertisements. The Wright House was one of the first to employ female clerks and the first to host a fashion show with a promenade of living models. The store also had writing rooms, restrooms trimmed with polished Italian marble, and an emergency ward complete with a bed. Following the death of Watkins in 1903, his sons and later his grandsons took over the business. The store remained a family enterprise until 1909. It was later sold and fell under the control of mercantile stores, but the name remained the same. On August 19, 1948, the property changed hands at an estimated cost of $862,000. The store then underwent renovations and became the first of Hamilton's downtown department stores to install air conditioning. Due to a number of unfortunate circumstances, the store eventually closed on January 3, 1983. It remained vacant until purchased by Gorham Development Limited. They restored the Wright House to its original splendor. The building was soon recognized under the Ontario Heritage Act as a historically significant building. It was then renamed Park Place and opened as a mall in September of 1989. In 1995, the building was purchased by the Aragon Group, a Vancouver-based development company. The main floor was converted into a service-oriented business area, and after a $125,000 facelift, Park Place was renamed the Wright House and currently houses a Tim Hortons on the ground floor. Continuing east along King Street, we approach the Kresge store. Sebastian S. Kresge was the founder of the firm that bears his name. He was born on a small farm in Bald Mount, Pennsylvania in 1867. Over time, Kresge managed to save $8,000 to invest in a business. He knew that there was a need for a store with everyday and luxury items at a low price. In 1899, he opened his first store. On April 4, 1930, Kresge opened its 22nd store in Canada, located at 43-4 King Street East. It was the largest single floor variety store in Canada, with 32 departments and 1,200 feet of counter space. The store expanded in 1948 to 43-53 King Street East. It expanded into the area formerly occupied by the Eaton Warehouse. In 1977, the Kresge Corporation changed its name to Kmart. The Kresge chain had once had 70 stores across Canada, but all resources began to go into Kmart. The King Street East location closed on April 27, 1994, after 64 years and 103 days of business. In 1998, Delta Bingo opened in the old Kresge store. They had been forced to move when their original site at the Delta was no longer available. The owners put $500,000 worth of renovations and the hall opened in March of 1998. Delta Bingo moved out in January of 2014 and the building is currently vacant. 
We continue down King Street to the middle of the block between Houston and John Streets. The McKay Brothers store, later R. McKay and Company, opened about 1880 at the corner of King and John Streets. As the store prospered, they acquired a larger building in the middle of the block between Houston and John. They expanded over the years, becoming one of the busiest department stores in the city. They had a particularly large toy section on the second floor and also sold all sorts of other goods such as handkerchiefs, artware, fancy goods, and brush and novelty items. They also had a large house furnishing department. On February 17, 1914, the entire store was destroyed by fire. They rebuilt on the same site and reopened on June 3, 1915, although only the first floor was ready. In 1922, the store was acquired by Steel Stores Limited of the United States, but after a short time they closed the business. Later the building was divided and rented to several tenants, including a restaurant, a bowling alley, and several stores. This is the current location of the old McKay building. Max Mintz got into the chicken business in Toronto, working at the Chicken Palace on Young Street. He came to Hamilton to scout a location for his own restaurant, and settled on 67 to 69 King Street East. The Mintz brothers, Max and Benny, opened the Chicken Roost restaurant on October 1st, 1948. That day, the storefront was packed with a lineup of people waiting. At the height of the business, the Chicken Roost employed 56 people. The restaurant had a seating capacity of 160. Some of the favorite menu items served in the Chicken Roost included lobster salad, chopped liver, tea biscuits, cherry cokes, french fries, chicken soup, pies, rice pudding, and ice cream topped with fudge sauce. In 1984, the restaurant was sold to three businessmen from Toronto and closed in 1986. This is the current view of the location. The Pagoda Restaurant, located at 85 and a half King Street East, was the oldest restaurant in Hamilton still in operation downtown until recently. The restaurant had started in 1941 and quickly became known as a specialist in Cantonese and Sichuan cooking. The Pagoda is still in operation today, but not in its original downtown location. Continuing eastward again, we travel the block between John and Catherine Streets. Stanley Mills & Company started as a hardware store in 1888 at the corner of John and Jackson Streets. In 1906, Charles Mills bought a store on John Street South and brought his son Nelson Mills in to run what became known as Mills Hardware Store. They opened a store on Barton Street East and in 1912 bought the J.B. Gay Bookstore at 95 King Street East and converted it to a hardware store. This building became their head office. Mills Hardware eventually had branches on James Street North, Ottawa Street North, Main Street East, and even as far away as Burlington and Galt. By 1960 they were down to only two stores, the King Street Store and a store on the mountain on Fennel Avenue. Mills Hardware last appeared at this location in the 1961 City Directory. For the next few years it housed a couple of small department stores or stood vacant until the building underwent a radical change. Herman Laufer, Jack Fisher and Max Mintz formed a partnership in 1965 to open Hamilton's first high-class tavern. They put $800,000 into the place and made it into a 500-seat tavern with a staff of up to 50. Diamond Jim's Tavern, named after the famous Diamond Jim Brady, opened at the end of December of 1966 with featured performers the Ink Spots. It was a balcony, a dance floor, and scantily dressed ladies swinging from the ceiling. Some were flesh and blood, while others were mannequins. The spectator gushed, the place has class, real red plush 1890s class. Diamond Jim's was in business for 10 years until the owners defaulted on a mortgage in the spring of 1977 and closed. The building stood empty until it sold at a public auction in 1978. The building now houses a variety of artistic endeavors, including one called, aptly enough, Mills Hardware. The Lowe's Theatre, which would later be known as the Capitol Theatre, opened on New Year's Eve in 1917. The theatre, erected by the Lowe's Corporation and designed by Thomas W. Lamb, an architect of international fame known for designing Radio City Music Hall in New York, cost $225,000. It was Hamilton's largest theatre at the time, with a seating capacity of 2,268. The lobby floor was made from marble, had brilliant lighting, large plate glass mirrors, and photographs of the monarchy decorating the walls. A dome of stained glass served as a skylight. 
The exterior of the theater had an enormous canopy that stretched over the crowd. In 1922, the theater was taken over by new management and was to be known as the Capitol Theater and reopened in September of that year. In 1926, an organ was brought into the Capitol after serving a Winnipeg church for years. There were 1,300 pipes fabricated in Woodstock. The organ took nearly six months to install. In 1930, the Capitol was taken over by Canadian Famous Players Corporation and remained in their control until 1946, when it was turned over to the Canadian Odeon Theatre chain. In 1958, the steel canopy of the Capitol, which had been in place since 1917, was torn down as a result of a general renovation project. The limestone front was sandblasted, and a 30-inch canopy, which had a hidden set of lights in it, replaced the old canopy. On August 31, 1971, movie operations ceased. On January 10, 1973, demolition of the theatre commenced. Many of the items were sold on auction. The rear portion was torn down and replaced with a parking lot, and the front portion of the theatre was transformed into stores. This is what the site looks like today. The Hamilton Spectator published their first newspaper on July 15, 1846. They moved around to various locations during their life before settling on a King Street East location. Their previous home was not far away. The Spectator had been on James Street South from 1884 until May 16, 1921, when they moved to their new quarters on King Street East. In 1951, the building underwent a renovation. The stores that had been in the ground floor were moved around and the building was expanded. The facade of the building was to be Queenston and Indiana limestone with a stainless steel sash. The Rainbow Shop moved into an expanded storefront in the new space. They had been in the Spectator building for 18 and a half years. The Spectator installed a giant weather forecast and temperature unit atop the building on August 28, 1956. It was the only sign of its type in Canada. It contained 654 feet of neon tubing, 250 bulbs, and a mile and a half of wiring. It was to run 24 hours a day, giving an accurate and up-to-date temperature reading and weather forecast. On February 24, 1970, a clock and humidity reading display were added. The King Street East building closed on July 31, 1976, and opened in their new building on Frid Street the next day. After the spectator vacated the building, the weather sign was removed on August 6, 1976 by Claude Neon Limited. When asked about the fate of the sign, it was noted that it was to be scrapped. This is the building today, with the old base for the sign still visible on the roof. 